Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 5. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 7 of Book 5. Now before we begin, I'd like to restate the definition of two ratios being equal. I went over this before in a prior proof, but this is just a bit of a refresher. So by definition, if we have four numbers, A, B, C, and D, and we have two arbitrary numbers, P and Q, if for every P and Q where P times A is greater than Q times B, if that also means that P times C is greater than Q times D, or again with some all arbitrary choices of P and Q where PA is less than QB also implies that PC is less than QD. And again, for equals equals, if this is true, then that is the definition that A to B or the ratio of A to B is equal to the ratio of C to D. Now this is a long-winded way of writing it. So this is the short form. PA greater than QB implies that PC is greater than QD. PA is equal to QB implies that PC is equal to QD, and then the less than. So basically, PA greater, equal, or less than QB implies that PC is greater, equal, or less than QD. This is how we write this all mess. We are going to use this definition in this proposition. So I just wanted to make for sure that you remembered what it meant. So let's carry on to the actual proposition. We have three lines, A, B, and C. A and B are equal, and C is not equal. And this proposition states, if this is true, then the ratio of A to C is equal to the ratio of B to C, and the inverse, that the ratio of C to A is equal to the ratio of C to B. Now I know this seems rather obvious. It's true with real numbers, but given our definition of equals is different for ratios, this actually has to be proved. So let's start with our A equals B, which is not equal to C. Let's draw two lines D and E that are equal multiples of A and B, and draw a third line F which is just some multiple of C. Now D is equal to N times A, E is equal to N times B, but A and B are equal, so therefore D and E are also equal. So D is just a line, F is just some other line, D and E are equal, so if D is greater than F, then E will also be greater than F. If D is equal to F, E is equal to F, and so on and so forth. This is just because now we're dealing with magnitudes and not ratios. Well, D is equal to NA, F is equal to MC, E is equal to NB, and F is equal to MC. Well, this looks like an awful lot like the definition of equality of a ratio. And it actually is the definition of the quality of a ratio. So here we have shown, since we've proven that this is true, then by definition, the ratio of A to C is equal to the ratio of B to C. Now we just flip things around. D and E are equal. So if F is greater than D, F is also greater than E f equals d, f equals e, and so on and so forth. Again, substituting that f is equal to mc, d is equal to na, mc, nb, we now have the definition for equality between the ratios of c, the ratio of c to a is equal to the ratio of c to b. So there we have shown that if we have three lines, or three magnitudes, excuse me, our lines are just used to represent the magnitudes. If A equals B, which is not equal to C, then the ratio A to C is equal to B to C, and the ratio C to A is equal to the ratio of C to B. 
And that's pretty much it. And that concludes this video presentation. To see the next presentation, just click the next button.